Okay, welcome back everybody. Um, so we're going to have a time of worship now, worship and thanksgiving um, for everything that we've received this weekend um, and, just, and also to worship God. And um, just to plant the thought in your mind now that um, if anybody has a testimony that they want to um, just give the glory back to God for something that has happened over these days, then there will be a chance to do that later on in the worship, um, probably from about 11 o'clock or something like that. So it gives you a little bit of time to just 
just think and just ask the Lord, is there anything the Lord wants you to share? Um, a testimony that would give other people encouragement and that would also give glory to God and um, just, you know, give that, give that witness really. So if it's something specific that has happened over these last few days, then just ask God. And if it stays with you and it just niggles at you, then it probably means that God wants you to share something. Um, so we'll have some short time for that later on in the worship. Um, Psalm 149 was one of the psalms in the morning prayer of the church today. Um, and it says, sing a new song to the Lord. His praise in the assembly of the faithful. That's us. Um, let Israel rejoice in its maker. Let Sion's sons exult in their God. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music with timbrel and heart. For the Lord takes delight in his people. Um, Etc. Um, so... I'm not sure what a timbrel is. What's a timbrel, Meg? It's a, little a little tambourine, right? Okay. Well, you've got the tambourines <laughs> over there. <laughs> um, Sister Therese did have a go on the drum. She was desperate to. Um, so, we have, we we will be auditioning her. You know, in the coming months, we'll be checking on her progress. <laughs> So would you like to stand? Let's just pray. Come Holy Spirit, teach us how to praise this morning. Show us how to give glory and thanks to our God, to our maker, to the Lord of heaven and earth. We want to sing a new song to the Lord. We want to come within his courts of thanksgiving with a song of praise in our hearts. Lord, we want to give you the worship that you deserve. We want to say that you are worthy, Lord. And we want to thank you for all that you've done in our lives and all that you are doing and all that you will do. We want to thank you for your presence. We want to thank you for your love. We would just want to thank you for the gift of knowing you, Lord. We thank you. We praise you, Jesus. We give you glory, Lord our God. We thank you. We love you, Lord. We thank you for your love. We want to know you more. We want to be changed by you. We want to be transformed, Jesus. We want to be more holy.
Jesus, we pray for the grace to say yes and to choose you as we go from this place later today. I'm sure many of us will be facing into some maybe some challenging circumstances, um, but to have that sense of going forward with the graces that we've received, with the grace to choose the Lord every day, to say every morning, Lord, I choose you again. Jesus, my life is in you. My heart belongs to you. Come and fill my heart and my mind with your Holy Spirit. We trust in you, Lord. We trust in your faithfulness.
just take a moment to ask Jesus how he wants to be magnified in us. Just ask Jesus in your heart, Lord, how can you be magnified even more in my life? Is there something you want me to do? Is there something that you don't want me to do anymore? Is there someone that you want me to serve? Maybe the Lord has put it on your heart that there is something that you would like to uh, share testimony about, um, something from maybe this weekend that you'd like to just give the glory back to God. Um, so there's a microphone here at the front, and we'll just take some time um, for, the, for that sharing. So just quickly, just to say during the praise and worship, um, as we were singing, I was just seeing um, like rain coming down on us, and I thought, oh, that's lovely, that's the Holy Spirit. But then it changed into like um, golden water coming down, and I felt, oh, that's the glory of God, and it was coming down on us. And uh, I just felt the Lord say, take my glory from this place to where to into your homes and into your everyday lives. Um, just remember you've, you've received God's glory here in his place and, and to n not to feel it, you're leaving it behind you're actually, he's immersed you in that glory today and through this weekend but to take it with you and, um, and then you saying that I thought I must share that before somebody comes out because we do have, every single one of us have had God's glory poured on us this morning Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I've never had anything for years, so I don't come up often and talk or say I've got images or words or anything like that. It's been a long, long time, but I just remembered there um, during Father Pat's talk while still watching him and that, I just got a sense of thinking it was something going on about the desert and you know that way you're walking in, in fear, you don't know how the elements are going to be and it was within a quick second you meet the I met, you see the man, you know, the way they would be dressed in the desert and it was as if you recognise and recognised Jesus and um, as soon as they did it was an embrace and joy and as, as I just started walking in the desert with nothing to fear. I don't know if that's for someone else or if it was for me, but it was kind of the first thing in many, many years that I've ever came close to thinking maybe that was from God. So I'll leave it to you. <laughs> that's what I got. <laughs> As Kathleen would say, opportunity knocks. <laughs> Anyone like to give God glory for something? It can be big.
big, small, it can be really simple. Oops. Thank you. Just having the presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. Oh, yeah. I mean, what a gift this weekend. I can't sit there and not give glory to God. It's just, you know, God is so good, so giving. He just loves you all. And for those who don't feel loved, he's created you. He only creates good things. And you're in his lightness. So if you're ever feeling low, look in the mirror and say, God, the greatest thing that God has created is me. You know, <laughs> it's true. And we don't, we don't accept God's love. And I'll enc anyone, I encourage you to go to adoration Yes. That wonderful time, the Lord gave me a big picture once, and uh, we're in the uh, in the uh, friary, and there was four people in adoration, and I, I ended up saying, "Oh Lord, I'm so sorry that so many people don't come to you." I was sort of repenting, and then the Lord just sh said, "Don't worry about it. The church is packed with angels and saints. I'm yeah. never on my own, <laughs> you know." And take that opportunity. And it's been such a blessing to pray with people this weekend. And we, we give glory to God. And I thank God for absolutely everything in my life. I can't sit there and not give praise to God. So, and I've had two healings. One in Lewis. I had a, a kidney stone. And uh, I'd passed one little one. And then I was asked to take somebody in the water. And um, they were a special need. But they were perfectly physically healthy. And they told me to use a wheelchair. And I said, no. I had this conviction, I'm saying, you know, if you want to go and get healed, don't go cheating. You know, we'll, we'll get down and we can say the rosary and pray. And uh, I've got no intention of going in the water. And uh, the week before, I was crippled in pain and I was thinking, I'm going to Lewis as a helper. God, you've got a great sense of humour, <laughs> you know. So uh, we got there and the, when we got in, the guy gave us a towel. He gave my friend, you know, who was supporting and he gave me a towel. I was like, oh, no, I don't want one of them. I don't like cold water. I'm the, when I go swimming, I put my foot in the water. I'm like, oh. It takes me forever to get in. And Lewis' water's so cold. And he, he told me, oh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, blah. So, so <laughs> he went in. And I went in. And I was thinking, oh, God, sorry for this heart. Sorry, our lady. But I hate cold water. And I was thinking, please, God, they'll only just sprinkle me. And now I'm full immersion. <laughs> And I'd come out and I was hyper, hyperventilating and everything else. And, um, but afterwards, you know, I thanked the lad for being righteous and walking and praying and, and receiving. And about two weeks later, I'm thinking, oh, that's strange. I've got no pain, you know. And uh, when I went to have it checked and they put the scan on me, I passed nothing and my kidney was totally clear. Oh, the Lord. other little thing, on a community day with Sister Regina, we were going to Holy Well, to St Winifred's Well, and I used to do a lot of martial arts when I was younger, judo and crazy sports, and uh, I've got this neck of mine that every now and again it really attacked my neck, and I've always had a weakness there because of the exercises we used to do on it. And um, I was driving a 16-seater bus, there was 15 of us, and I said to Kate, I don't tell anybody, but can you be my eyes when I'm looking left? So I've got these people in the bus, and I'm, if I'm looking, I'm going like this. I couldn't move my neck. <laughs> and while we're at the well, um, people were asking me, because I'm big and tall and lanky, um, to reach over and pass them the water. And you're supposed to put the water on three times. And Kate said to me afterwards, why don't you do it? And I said, oh, no, no, no. The pride... You know what I mean? <laughs> and I was thinking, no, I don't want to see anyone, you know. And that's a man thing, isn't it, pride? And, uh, you know, I repent that's against that. Thing. But fair play to Kate, being so righteous. So she says, go on, you've got nothing to lose. So I put the three lots of water on and said, thank you, St. Winifred, and if you, if you can heal me, I'll be grateful. And then again, I drove back, no problem at all, never thought about anything. And then about a week or two later, Kate says, how's your neck? And from that day to this... I've never had a problem with it. So glory to God. Yes. <laughs> Father Brian. Yeah. 
I'd just like to say something about the wonderful diocese. Diocese of Birmingham, the wonderful diocese of Birmingham, because as a person who comes from elsewhere, I'm aware of what's going on up here because my daughter has moved into your region about 12 years ago. And I think you're all wonderful up in Birmingham and such a vigorous diocese and all the things that happen up here and supporting this wonderful group that I've been part of for, I don't know, whatever it's been going on in all the places we've been to Solihull and Birmingham. But thank you very much, Diocese of Birmingham. And thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you. just like to thank Father Eamon and the wonderful ladies that prayed for me and anointed me this morning. Um, the advice the ladies gave me was to squeeze all my troubles up in my hands and put them in the waste paper bin, which I've now, now done. And okay. I would also like to thank Ray and Diane for arranging this conference. Thank you. I was just sitting there and I, uh, I, I remembered from the last conference, the big conference when we was at St. John's, and I remember uh, saying that I'd had a healing because I'd had uh, ME for a, a long time and I'd been suffering with it for um, about 30 years. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'd got to a certain level where I was, like, um, sort of coping with it and I'd got... To, um, but it was, like, chronic then and I was, I was a lot better, but I was getting... You know, I was still having a lot of bad days and I'd come to a conference and I'd be all right for perhaps the first day or two and then I'd go really tired and it was like, uh, it was it was very difficult and uh, I remember the last conference, uh, um, Frank prayed with me and this lady and uh, and then I could feel the energy, it was like a tap had been put on and uh, I could feel the energy be flowing and I thought, oh, this is lovely and I remember, do you, I don't know if you remember Francis, but I'll come at the end and I was saying, I'm going to come back next year and I'm going to say that I've been healed and it's carried on the healing. And um, so I just wanted to give glory to God because I am here, although we've had COVID and it's taken a, a while, but there's been an incredible improvement in my health and it's only really, and it might be just back to like normally if I'm doing a load of extra work with the grandchildren and whatever, that I'm getting these sort of slightly exhausted days, but, um, you know, everybody might get that now. So there's been a wonderful improvement that's not the tony and i'm just so grateful because i thought well this is a bit of a test this conference because really i thought right today i've had a few late nights especially as we were um, celebrating our uh, wedding anniversary last night and i haven't had much sleep to be honest and um and i thought well, this, this morning i thought i'll see how i wake up because normally you know going back before the last conference i i would have woke up feeling this uh, this illness and tiredness and drainness and i haven't this morning so i wanted to give glory to god for that because that's a, i can really see the difference so thank you god um i'm sure there are many other people um as well who you know all of us have been touched this weekend in some way and it may only be sorry would you like to share yes can you hear me yes uh two things uh father i want to give thanks to god for two things uh father pat asked us in the first talk i think had we experienced the spirit of god and in what way had we experienced it and two memories came back to me, which I hadn't thought of for a long time. Uh, one, when I was a young teenager, I used to go to a house where my aunt was a domestic servant. And it, it was a large house. And uh, they had a, um, where they, uh, an orchard. And in that orchard, I, my, uh, the woman who worked with my aunt used to give me the White Father's booklet. And uh, I used to go walking around the orchard and found a nook where I used to sit and put my feet up on the other one. And 
I would, that was a very powerful, the presence of God was really very powerful. Mm -hmm. And I gained a great deal of spiritual strength from it. And the other one was a memory of when I was um, a, a, an older teenager in my late teens um, in procession uh, to the Sacred Heart of mm -hmm. Jesus. And I had a real, very strong anointing there as well. So that's it, those are the two things. The other one is um, I had the grace of a wonderful confession uh, uh, here um, with, uh, I forgot. <laughs> yes. And um, so I give thanks for that because that was as a result of Alice talking about memories when you were a little child and uh, going back to your parents. And so I was able to confess uh, unforgiveness that I didn't even realize was there. So uh, that's mine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I'd really invite you to, um, when you go home, even to write down, you know, it might be in the coming days this week that you really reflect on all that the Lord has done. Write those things down so that you don't forget and so that you can really treasure them. And also, my challenge to you is to, sh is to share what you've experienced this weekend with at least... Ten people. Ten, wow. I was going to say three, but Meg says ten, so... <laughs> share it with as many people as you can and, you know, perhaps ask the Lord if there are people he wants you to invite for next year. You know, we're hoping that we'll sort of be back to normal next year. This was a bit of a stepping stone a bit of a smaller conference but you know if it's God's will we'll be more back to normal next year and so who could you invite uh, I know that there are a few new people here who it's their first time um, so yeah that's just a little thought for you to take with you and then um, Kathy's just going to read um, a prophecy that she's received what do you see as I take you into this next season the old has gone, and the new is about to begin. Widen your tent pegs, stretch the canvas, prepare yourselves, I am doing a new thing. Allow me to touch you and expand your minds. Only then will you truly see what I am about to do through you and with you. Let me set your imaginations on fire. I want you to dream big. Do not try to box me in or set boundaries or limitations on what I can do. I am the God of the impossible. I am bringing to this earth the greatest move of my hand the world has ever seen. You are part of the remnant that has prayed for that. You will see my hand move and how it shall move. I am cleansing my church I want a spotless bride without spot or blemish. People will once again desire holiness because I am holy. They will seek me with a hunger and thirst they have never known because nothing else will satisfy them. The time has come to take off your garments of mourning and put on your garments of praise. It is time to celebrate what I, the Lord God, is doing in this land and in all the nations of the earth. You might say, I see nothing but devastation and misery. So many things are going wrong. But did I not forewarn you in my word that these things must happen? In the same way you would clean, cleanse a wound in order to bring about the healing process, that is what I am doing now. So do not be afraid of this process, but press forward into all that I have for you. I am making all things brand new. I am restoring what has been lost and what has been stolen by the enemy of your souls. My children, I am your father. I love you with an everlasting love. Nothing can separate you from me. Seek refuge in me and I will protect you.
surrogate. We are doing starting the life in the spirit seminars that haven't been done for years. And I've been very apprehensive because as far as the digital view look is concerned, we get more people coming from other parts of the country than from Harrogate itself. You spoke about the desert. I feel that Harrogate at the moment is like the desert for us. And those words that you spoke are have just really reassured me. Praise and God. So I would ask you Thank to you pray Lord. for the life in the spirit seminars if we're going to start and pray for Harrogate and send Amen. the deanery. Thank you. Thank you. We'll just have one more testimony. I attended a retreat in July. Isaiah 54, verse 2. Widen your tents, secure your tent pegs. That certainly was a prophecy to me because that's a continuation from what was done at the retreat, and I never expected that today or any other day from anywhere. Thank you. Just confirm Tony's word. Spend time in front of the Blessed Sacrament and it will increase your faith and the faith of others in your church. Spend time in front of the Blessed Sacrament. There's no better place to be. Um, so before we begin our Holy Mass, um, there will be a collection today. And just to let you know that the fees of this conference was just for your room. It, we just used all that money, was directly paid to the hotel. So we've got to find the money for the conference fees, for people, you know, for the speakers and for equipment. So I'm not going to say how much, obviously, but can you just, just pray about it? And what is it that God wants you to give? Because you know he loves a generous giver and a happy giver. And you know yourself. I mean, my husband's always amazed by this. Whenever we give, he always gives it us back. It's the best investment ever is to give to God. We'll always get it back. And can I just thank you in advance? Thank you. So we're really delighted that um, our main celebrant for Mass this morning is Father Brian McGinley. Um, I believe he's been a friend of the conference for many years. He's from Meg's parish. Um, well, Meg's part of his parish, I guess. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> in Worcester. And we're really delighted that he's with us this morning. Of course, Father Pat's uh, still here to can celebrate as well. So we just bring all of our prayers and intentions, all of our thanksgiving uh, to God now in the greatest prayer of thanksgiving, which is the Eucharist. So we just take a moment to call to mind our intentions for Mass today. Let's stand. Father God, I wonder how I managed to exist without the knowledge of your parenthood and your loving care. But now I am your child, I am adopted in your family, and I can never be alone. Father God, your love is Thank you. 
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. It's a great way to start Mass, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I wish we could do that every Sunday in the parish as well. We can. can we can. <laughs> we can. <laughs> Me and Meg would start. Yeah, we'd start. And they'd be saying, what are those two up to? Anyway. It's lovely to be here with you, and I'm very grateful to the Lord for allowing me to get a Sunday morning off, because I've got a couple of retired priests who helped me. I was telling Father Pat, I'm very blessed with help in the parish, and to thank Meg for volunteering me to come and, <laughs> um, sorry, celebrate um, Mass with you this morning. The Mass is the greatest act of worship that we can offer God. This is the heart of our faith. You know, when we begin Mass, we're not starting anything new. We're simply here on earth, joining in with something that's going on constantly around the throne of God in heaven, worshipping and praising the Lamb. We're just plugging into that great stream of prayer and praise that is always going up, because somewhere in the world there will be Mass being offered. So we are joining that stream of adoration and praise before the throne of the Lamb this morning. But in order to prepare ourselves to celebrate these most sacred of mysteries, we need each one of us to repent of our sins. We acknowledge that we have failed in love for God and failed in love for each other. So let's pause for a few moments and acknowledge our sinfulness, but also express our incredible confidence in the great love and mercy and un undeserved pardon from, from the Lord. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord says this, I am coming to gather the nations of every language. They shall come to witness my glory. I will give them a sign and send, <clears throat> and send some of their survivors to the nations. Tarshish, Put, Lud, Mushad, Rosh, Tubai, and Javan. To the distant islands that have never heard of me or seen my glory. They will proclaim my glory to the nations. As an offering to the Lord, they will bring all your brothers on horses, in chariots, in litters, on mules and dromedaries. And from all the nations to my holy mountain in Jerusalem, says the Lord like Israelites bringing oblations in clean vessels to the temple of the Lord. And some of them I will make priests and Levites, says the Lord. Thank you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. from the letter to the Hebrews. Have you forgotten that encouraging text in which you are addressed as sons? My son, when the Lord corrects you, do not treat it lightly, but do not get discouraged when he reprimands you. For the Lord trains the ones that he loves and he punishes all those that he acknowledges as his sons. Suffering is part of your training. God is training you as his sons. Has there ever been any son whose father did not train him? Of course, any punishment that is most painful at the time and far from pleasant, but later, in those on whom it has been used, it bears fruit 
in peace and goodness. So hold up your limp arms and steady your trembling knees and smooth out the path you tread. Then the injured limb will not be wrenched. It will grow strong again. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Through towns and villages, Jesus went teaching, making his way to Jerusalem. Someone said to him, Sir, will there be only a few saved? He said to them, Try your best to enter by the narrow door, because I tell you, many will try to enter and will not succeed. Once the master of the house has got up and locked the door, you may find yourself knocking on the door saying, Lord, open to us, but he will answer, I do not know where you come from. Then you will find yourself saying, we once ate and drank in your company. You taught in our streets. But he will reply, I do not know where you come from. Away from me, all you wicked men. Then there will be weeping and grinding of teeth when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and yourselves turned outside. And men from east and west, from north and south, will come to take their places at the feast in the kingdom of God. Yes, there are those now last who will be first and those now first who will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us sit down. <laughs> Sir, will there be only a few saved? <laughs> Have you ever been asked if you're saved? It happens sometimes. I was asked by the Jehovah's Witnesses once. Were you saved? I said, well, actually, it's a bit awkward because according to you, there's only going to be 144,000 of us saved. And there's more than that in the Jehovah's Witnesses. So some of you are going to be a bit disappointed. How many are you saved? I've been asked that by street preachers as well. Are you saved? And I say, yes, I am. Yeah, I am. I say it when I have meetings of evangelical and Pentecostal ministers and we're talking about salvation. They don't know quite what to make of me. They say, he seems quite Catholic, but he's also a bit evangelical and charismatic. <laughs> and yet he says the rosary and he believes the Pope's the head of the church and all the rest of it. Will there only be a few saved? It's quite an interesting question that Jesus found being, being put to him in the gospel today. The main theme of God's word today, and there's a wonderful buffet of scripture that we've just heard. Thank you everybody for reading, especially the lady, all those incredibly difficult names to read. <laughs> Jovan, Tubal, this, that, and the other. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, the theme of God's word today is not only the number, but the quality of the persons who are to be saved. It is a problem that troubles a lot of Christians. Will I get to heaven? Will I make the kingdom? You know, there are some fundamentalist followers of Christ both Catholic and Protestant, 
who insist you cannot be saved unless you belong to our gang. Okay? That's rather like playing God, which worries me. That's like playing God, deciding who's in and who's out. In that beautiful first reading from Isaiah, tells of God's universal will to to save everybody. It said there, I come to gather nations of every language. They shall come and see my glory. And we can recall the old theological teaching that God gives everyone sufficient grace to be saved. God gives everyone sufficient grace to be saved. That Jesus died for the salvation of all, not an elite band. And if anyone is lost, it is because he or she deliberately and maliciously resists God's saving will. Stubbornly, to the last breath. So when we talk about heaven and the hot place, I said to the people last night, remember I said, God sends no one to hell. We send ourselves to hell because of our choices and our life that we make each day. And yet, although we're allowed, I think I'm right here, Father Pat, you can tell me if I'm preaching heresy. Although we have to say that hell exists, we're not allowed actually to say if there's anyone there. You're not allowed to do that, no. It does exist. It's a possibility. Why? Because we have free will. We can choose for God or against God, and we can be stubbornly refusing God all our lives. So don't be surprised then. But then God gives wonderful moments for repentance, doesn't he? Think of the good thief. Think of the prayers we say for those who've taken their own lives. They're very beautiful. Look at what the catechism says about suicide. It's very beautiful. I once gave the quotation from a catechism of the Catholic Church about suicide to an Elim Pentecostal minister who then used it when he addressed a thousand Elim Pentecostal ministers in London at a convention. And he said to me, I told them, Brian, I've had this quote from a Catholic priest and it'll probably be the first and maybe the last time I quote from the Catechism of the Catholic Church. (laughs) But nobody objected. You know, think of purgatory. Think of all the opportunity. God will do absolutely anything. The only way you'll get to hell, they're going to say, is over his dead body. (laughs) You know. But we have to remember, I think what Jesus is saying today as well, that salvation is not automatic. You know, it's very difficult for us priests these days. I'm sure Father Pat will agree with me. When you do a funeral, which I sometimes call the beatification of the dead person or the canonization of the dead person, never said a bad word about anybody. (laughs) Always helped everybody. I say, well, we don't have to offer mass for them then if they've gone straight to heaven. We don't, you know, there's no sins to ask for forgiveness for, you know primary duty to pray for the departed is for their forgiveness, that the blood of Jesus will cleanse them from sin, that they will be made fit to enter, at least to get to purgatory. I so want to get to purgatory, I really do, because there's only one, there's only one exit, and that's to heaven. I remember a parishioner being shocked when I said that once in a homily. I said, if I get to purgatory, I'll be so happy. He says, Father, that's a terrible thing to say. I said, no, it's not. I said, I'm well aware of my own sinfulness. I'm well aware that when I leave this world, I'll need to be loved back into shape to get all the bumps and the dents out, you know. And the number of times when I've preferred my will to God's will, God provides that little recuperation ward. Salvation is not automatic. In the gospel, Jesus tells tells the people that being members of the Jewish people And by extension, being members of any Christian denomination is no guarantee of salvation. That would make salvation too mechanical. That would dehumanize it. It would make Christianity a spectator sport. You can sit here, as long as I say I'm a Catholic, it doesn't matter what I do. You know, you know, you know my lovely verse, Meg knows it as well. Cardinal O'Fee once said, about Paddy Murphy. Paddy Murphy went to Mass, never missed a Sunday. Paddy Murphy went to hell for what he did on Monday. (laughs) 
You see the difference between saying, having a label, Catholic, Christian, and can we see that, please? We need to see sermons as well as hear them. We need to see living sermons in the lives of all those who profess to be followers of Jesus. Preaching's easy, but living the Christian life, witnessing, evangelizing, that's the measure. Salvation has indeed been won for us by Christ, and that's what we're celebrating over this weekend, what we do every time we praise, every time we celebrate Mass. That saving mystery becomes present here and now. Calvary comes to Bourneville, you know. Salvation has been won for us by Christ, and there is nothing we can do to earn or deserve it. It is a completely free gift. But the faith that Jesus freely gives us imposes responsibilities on us. We may never take it for granted. Faith results in a living personal relationship with Jesus. And a relationship with any person, especially with Jesus, can never be static. If one does not grow in intimacy, the relationship deteriorates and can easily be lost. Think of all the people. When I sometimes look at my baptismal register and my First Holy Communion and my confirmation registers, there's thousands of names in it. I thought if everybody who had been through the sacraments, had been through the sacraments, came to church, we wouldn't be able to build churches big enough to keep us all in, to have us all in. You know, it's got to be more than just going through, you know, it has to be, where's that personal encounter with Jesus? That once you've got it, you would never, ever lose it. You would never think of giving it up. You know, as Bishop Donald Murray says, the sadness of today is that we live in a world where God is missing, but not missed. Doesn't that sum it up? God is missing, but not missed. So we have a responsibility to share that good news with others. If our relationship with Jesus does not grow, it deteriorates. And the result could be hearing the frightening words that we heard from Jesus in the gospel. I tell you, I do not know where you come from. Away from me, you wicked men. Actually, the Lord himself, Lord himself sees to it that we do not take our faith for granted. In the second reading today, beautifully, beautiful reading as well that we had from uh, Hebrews, it's lovely, tells us how very much and in what ways God wants to be involved in our personal work of faithfulness to our faith. My children, do not disdain the discipline of the Lord or lose heart if he reproves you, disciplines you. For those whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. <laughs> Sorry, I was just thinking there are probably plenty of times in our lives when we wish the Lord wouldn't love us quite so much. <laughs> right, Lord, I'll take this, I'll take this on the chin, but you know. I know you're doing it because you love me, but ooh, you know. How often are we tempted to think, what kind of love is it that insists on making things miserable for those I care for so much? Maybe that some counselors of, if any of you have any knowledge of, of addiction, alcoholism or drug addiction, the relatives of addicts are told that they have to show tough love, you know, and it's hard. No, you don't give them money. You don't put them up. You know, you don't save them every time they make a mess of their lives. You don't go and rescue them every time they pick up a drink or take some drug. Tough love. That's what the Lord shows us, I think, at times. Tough love. It is a love that says, I love you enough that I refuse to make it easy for you to grow. No one denies that suffering is difficult to understand and even more difficult to accept, especially when we see it in the lives of those we love. But I believe we instinctively recognize that suffering is an essential element in our growth and maturing as Christian men and women. That it is the best possible grateful response to the salvation Jesus won for us by his life, death, and resurrection. But only if, it's motiv only if it is motivated by love. If when we suffer, all that comes out of us is bitterness and complaining, we totally diminish its value. You know, 
whinging and moaning. And the Catholic, this Catholic belief, I used to find it all the time in the hospital when I was chaplain at the Heartlands, used to say, a number of Catholics used to say to me, Father, I don't know what I've done in my life that God's allowed this to happen to me. <laughs> I said, what? I said, what kind of God do you worship? I said, I'm afraid that's not the God I worship. He's not up there saying, oh, they're misbehaving, right? They're going to have something, they're going to have this, they're going to have that, exotic diseases and illnesses, you know. Remember the cure of the blind man? Remember in John's gospel, Lord, who sinned this man or his parents that he was born blind? He said, none of them. None of them. You know, God does not send illnesses as a punishment for personal sin on the whole. I mean, I think we have to take responsibility for our actions. You know, if we smoke a hundred fags a day, and get lung cancer, you can't say, why did God do this to me? You know. It's taking responsibility for our actions. To be a Christian means to follow Jesus. And it said in the gospel today, while making his way to Jerusalem, and we know what he was going to Jerusalem for, where he will be crucified. May we never forget the words of Jesus, my dear brothers and sisters, those who will not take their cross and come after me are not worthy of me. It's Matthew 10, 38. It is a little hard to explain that saying away. I think that life's trials and troubles, dare I say it, are not signs of God's absence, but of his presence. Everything that threatens our peace of mind or even life itself is a challenge, an opportunity to grow. Our trials and sufferings are the homework we are given in the school of life. Sorry if that sounds a bit twee, but it's, that's, I believe that. And I'm confident that we're never alone in suffering. Jesus is with us, suffering with us, holding us up, sharing his courage. We have to be patient with God as God is so patient with us. We remember too that Jesus died, but he also rose again. And that is our destiny also, as he tells us in the communion antiphon for today's mass. The one who eats my flesh and drinks my blood will live forever. I shall raise them to life on the last day. The best is yet to come. stand and profess our faith. <clears throat> Will we say the, um, the, just the Apostles' Creed, the shorter of the, of the two creeds? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Are we having formal bidding prayers? Just open them up right. Okay, so let's, with confidence in God's love, let us just bring our prayers and intentions before him now, full of confidence as his children. God, our Father, we pray for the church throughout the world. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and for all those entrusted with leadership within your church, that they may lead in faith and serve in love, 
the flock entrusted to their care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in our troubled world, especially in Ukraine and in the Middle East and in all troubled areas of the world, between the Israelis and the Palestinians, the troubled spots of Africa, and all those places where people are struggling to be reconciled to each other. And Lord, you can do that for us. So we pray for just and lasting solutions in all areas of conflict. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray for the members of our family and parishes who no longer practice their faith, Lord. We hold them up to you now. We ask that if you wish to use us to preach the gospel to them, to do it in a way which is attractive and encouraging and life-giving. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray for all those who are sick, especially those we know in hospital, hospices, nursing and care homes, and in their own homes. We pray that they may experience the healing touch of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray for ourselves, Lord. We pray that the graces <laughs> The seeds which have been planted this weekend will bear fruit in the days, weeks, and months to come. We pray that as we have experienced your presence here, we will take that with us, that we may be witnesses and evangelizers in a world which is starving for knowledge and love of you. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, our friend. And we commend to God's loving mercy all those who have died. We remember our own departed loved ones, those who died recently, those with anniversaries at this time. We pray that they may be given a place of rest, happiness, and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And we now ask the prayers of she who was called above all women on earth to bear our Savior, to intercede for us as we say together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. For a few moments now in silence, let us offer our own petitions to God in the silence of our hearts. Father, we thank you for listening to our prayers, those spoken aloud and those which remain in the silence of our hearts. And you know, we know that you will answer them all because we make them through Jesus, your Son, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Brothers and sisters, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands, praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Holy Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. We acknowledge the real presence of Jesus with us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Save us, save
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For, for the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's share with each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy.
thee that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. People going to the middle and to the other end. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. (coughs) Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ.
Let us pray. It's a nice introduction to the last prayer. <laughs> Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you to the readers. Thank you to the musicians. Thanks to Meg for inviting me. It's been lovely to be here with you today. Um, as you go forth from here, remember we are going out with joy, full of faith, full of evangelizing spirit. Um, remember, we may be the only sermon that a person sees. Okay? So our responsibilities to the Lord. Thank Father Pat. Sure, yes, yeah, sure, before the blessing, yeah. Sure. Um, would you just like to sit down for a moment? <coughs> um, just wanted to say a few thank yous uh, before we finish. Um, first of all, thank you to our priests. Um, we're always blessed with so many wonderful priests at the conference, and we know how much time goes into preparing homilies and just giving of their time to be here. So we had Father Raymond Corder. We've had uh, Monsignor Tim Menzies, we've had Father Brian McGinley today, and of course, Father Pat, who's been with us for all of these days. Yeah, yeah. So, thank you for all of them. Um, I'm going to say a few diff quite a few groups of people, so maybe we could just clap everybody at the end. Um, <laughs> Massive thank you again, particularly to Father Pat for being our key speaker, um, and praise God that his voice held out. Um, so we hope, Father, that you have a Monday off, do you? Having to tomorrow off and you have a great walk maybe in the Peak <laughs> District and enjoy God's creation. Um, we'd like to really thank Sister Anchilla um, for all of her a role in leading prayer, and just being so prayerful, being a great witness to us, and uh, all of her organisation of the sacristy duties. Um, a massive thank you to Jules and to Tom, uh, our technical team. Um, they are just in the background. They're so humble. They don't make a fuss. They just get on with it. Um, and they've helped us uh, the last few years... Um, especially in putting the conference out online onto YouTube. Um, so thank you very, very much. Um, thank you to Meg um, and to Alice. Alice isn't here with us, but thank you to them for the workshops that they led, uh, which blessed us so much. Thank you to Maisie and Rob um, for keeping us fed and watered in the evenings as we uh, had some fellowship and uh, some refreshments. So thank you very much. Um, and Tony and Kate, uh, particularly for coordinating all of the prayer ministry. Um, again, that's something that's going on a lot, maybe when the rest of us don't realize it. Um, but they're so passionate. And, you know, Tony always says, I don't want anyone to leave the conference who wanted prayer and didn't get it. So thank you very much for your commitment to that. Um, and to all of the committee, um, you know, this conference takes a lot of preparation and work over the course of a year. And we've been navigating very difficult times with the, with the pandemic and sort of trying to really listen to the Lord and to discern the way forward. Um, so please hold the committee in your prayers um, because, you know, we take fairly big risks. We know the Lord will back us up, but you know, um, still there's a lot that goes into these conferences. So I'd just like to read out the names of the committee. So Vicky, Ray, Diane Russell, Tony, Diane Clark, Father Eamon, Mike and Andrew. And all of those people have different roles to play in the, con in the conference, um, but they all give of their time and their service so willingly. So we're really grateful to them. Um, and the staff at Woodbrook, I think you'll agree, have been so lovely. They've been really amazing. 
Um, I think it's been a really good venue for us um, in this sort of interim period. And um, we're going to have a vote of thanks for the staff down in, during lunchtime. Um, we'll just pause at some point once we're all sort of through and had our main course. And we'll just take a moment to thank the staff down there because um, I think they've been brilliant and the rooms have been so comfortable. Um, they've looked after everything that we've needed um, and especially the catering, I think, has, you know, um, even it's been so plentiful, hasn't it, and, and uh, tasty. Um, so we'll give them a vote of thanks and we'll give them the offering um, down in the dining room. And thank you to all of you for coming. Thank you for supporting us so faithfully. Um, thank you for inviting new people. We're always really delighted when we see new faces, just as we're delighted to see old faces <laughs> returning. Um, so please do spread the word, uh, because if the Lord is calling us to step out next year back into a bigger conference again, um, then we, we very much depend on you to help us to promote and to, to bring people along so that they can receive the same blessings that, that we do. Um, so thank you very much. And thank you, Francis. Yeah, oh, yes. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> the, uh, uh, I've forgotten all the people on this right-hand side of me who I just feel like you're part of, I don't know, I don't know what it is, but anyway, to, to Mark, to Elise, to Vicky, to Meg, and I myself. incredible what Francis does I mean how she oozes like polio to me you know she's so good and faithful and loving and caring to every single one of us sadly we've actually only got her for this year because she's going to leave us but we will have next year Francis McLean because she's getting married in October <laughs> Thanks, Rachel. Good sure. one. <laughs> Can we stand for the blessing? Please, thank you. It was a nice blessing from the Missal, I think it was very appropriate for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in his kindness and pour out saving wisdom upon you. Amen. Amen. May he nourish you always with the teachings of the faith and make you persevere in good deeds. Amen. Amen. May he turn your steps towards himself and show you the path of charity and peace. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Hit it.
so have a safe journey home and uh, to pray for a young man that in Ireland that went out last night and he got really badly assaulted and he's critically ill in hospital so he needs our prayers and somebody's uh, asked sister uh, could we bring him up in the conference to pray for him so Lord Jesus